Let's get into it. I'm reading from Genesis 19. But before I get into it, I'm going to tell you the backstory. So, um, Genesis 19 talks about Lot and his family, his wife and his two daughters, okay? It gets weird at the end, but eh, but we're going to focus on the main parts, okay? So, the backstory to Genesis is, um, to, not to Genesis, <laughs> to Lot's story is that he was Abraham's nephew, and Abraham took him along when God sent him to the land that, when God sent Abraham to the land that he promised Abraham and all his descendants, you know? So when they got there, Lot, Lot was like, he was unsatisfied. He was like, the land is too small. I'm taking my family and we're moving. So they left and they went to Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm pretty sure. But over here, it just says Sodom. But I'm pretty sure it was, it's called Sodom and Gomorrah in some Bibles. I don't know. But they left and they went over there. Okay. So while over there, um, the people there were very, very sinful. They were filled with lust, fornication, doing all weird sexual stuff, okay, that we do as society today, okay? But we ain't going to get into all of that because... That's not my place. But, um, yeah, so that's what happened. They went over there. And um, two angels came to, to visit them, to spend the night with them. And when the angels got there, I mean, wait, let me just say, if y'all going to take these stories literal, take it literal. If y'all don't, don't, I don't care. I don't really want to read it, but... <laughs> I'll read it. Now the two angels, okay, we're reading from Genesis 19. All right, I don't know if I want to read this whole thing, though. All right. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Hear now, my lords, please turn into your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise early and go on your way. And they said, no, but we will spend the night in the open square. But he insisted strongly. So they turned into him and entered his house. Then he made them a feast and baked un unleavened bread and they ate. Now before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. And they called to Lot and said to him, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them carnally. So know them carnally means like have sex with them. So they want to have sex with the angels, okay? All right. <laughs> And if you know the whole story about the fallen angels and why they were cast out of um, heaven and all that stuff. If you don't, then then you don't. I'm not going to get into it because I think it's a controversial subject. But this is kind of that thing going on. But like said these aren't fallen angels. They're regular holy angels. So they weren't with it. Okay, so we're on verse 6. So Lot went out to them through the doorway, shut the door behind him, and said, Please, my brethren, do not do so wickedly. Then the men said to Lot, Have you anyone else here, son-in-law, your sons, your daughters, and whomever you have in the city? Take them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the outcry against them has grown great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-laws who had married his daughters and said, Get up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But to the sons-in-law, he seemed to be joking. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, 
The man took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters. The Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. 17. So it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you, nor sit, nor stay anywhere in plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. Then Lot said to them, Please know, my lords, indeed now your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have increased your mercy, which you have shown me by saying my life, but I by saving my life, but I cannot escape to the mountains lest some evil overtake me and I die. See now, this city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Please let me escape there. Is it not a little one, and my soul shall live? 21. He said to him, See, I have favored you concerning this thing also, and that I will not overthrow this city for which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zor. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah. From the Lord out of the heavens, so he overthrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. All right, I finished at verse 26. I'm going to read it again. But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Okay. I'm sorry. That I keep looking this way. My laptop's over here. You can probably see it. And things keep popping up. And I was just looking. It is so hot. All right. Okay, so that was Genesis 19. Now, <laughs> what was I going to say? <laughs> You can tell I've never done this before. Um, but yeah, I'm no preacher, no nothing. I'm not an evangelist, anything like that. I mean, I don't see myself as that way. I just... I, I just was given this message last week. And I didn't want to really talk on it, but uh, I'm talking on it. I'm going to do it. So, the end part, Right? Let's go towards the ending when the angels were telling Lot to leave. In the most Bible verse versions, they tell they say that the angels tell Lot to leave and it's and that the angels tell him and his family not to look back. Okay. But I don't think it said that in this Bible verse, but in most Bible versions they say that. Okay. But when the when they left and they escaped the city, the wife looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. Okay. God destroyed the city because they were overtaken by sexual immorality and lust and all that stuff. So God destroyed the city. But they looked back, but she looked back, the wife looked back, and she turned into Saul. So I'm not taking this in a literal sense, okay? But you can take it in a literal sense if you want to, if that's, if that's how you take the Bible. But I'm not taking this in a literal sense. This is how I'm going to take it. This is how I seen it. I was laying in bed and I just couldn't fall asleep last week. And, well, last week. Yeah, last week. I just couldn't fall asleep. And this story popped into my head out of nowhere, okay? Out of nowhere. It just popped into my head. So, this is what I started thinking about. I tried to apply it to my own life, okay? And to, like, normal human beings of today. Why would we look back? Why would someone look back, okay? So I'm thinking of it. This is what I came up with. People look back because their hearts are attached to the place, okay? Like, if she had no no type of love for that place, she wouldn't have looked back. She wouldn't cared. But she cared what was going to happen to them, so she looked back, okay? Because she was attached to the place. Then I started thinking, what would have happened if she didn't look back, okay? If she didn't look back, she would have went to Zor and then eventually went to the mountains where the angels told them to go, okay? Whew. 
She would have eventually been saved. She would have been saved from God's destruction, but she chose to look back because her heart was still attached to, to the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? So then I started thinking deeper into it. Let's go deeper into it. How many times has God told you to leave a place, a place that was, was not a good environment for you to be in, okay? A place that was very sinful, okay? A, a place in your life that was sinful, a person in your life that was sinful, or a person in your life that wasn't helping you to get to where you needed to go, okay? How many times have he told you to, look, to leave so that you didn't face destruction, but you look back. You look back because your heart was still in that friendship. You look back because your heart was still in that relationship. You look back because your heart was still at that job, okay? But he told you to leave, but you didn't listen. So, well, you listened, but you didn't look back, but you look back. So in, in this story, you can see that Lot's wife was disobedient. And her heart was, was, was for that place, Sodom. And so she faced destruction, okay? So, so oftentimes people are told to leave a certain situation, but they look back and then they, they face destruction, okay? They face destruction and now they're asking where God was. Why did God allow this to happen? But he told you to leave, okay? He told you. He told you to get out of that situation. He told you not to be at that job anymore. But you didn't listen, okay? You too attached to the money. The money was too much. It was too good. And you was like, nah, I'm not leaving this job. You were too attached to that friendship. The vibes were lit to you. And you said, nah, I'm not going to turn around and do something grimy to you. You were too attached to the relationship. You know, how many times do we face this today? Okay, we're told to leave a place of sin and we're leaving, but then we look back. If you're looking back, you can't move forward. Okay, you can't go where you're where God designed designed you to go. Okay, you can't fulfill your purpose. Lots and his family's purpose at that moment was to flee to the mountains, okay? Or to flee this joy and then eventually go to the mountains. Alright? And everyone else in his family besides his wife got there. They got there and they lived a good life. Oh, my collar is all messed up. All right. But yeah, they got there and they lived a good life, okay? And they fulfilled the, the purpose that or the will that God wanted them to fulfill at that moment. He wanted to save them from destruction. He didn't want to destroy Lot wife okay he didn't want to turn it into a pillar of salt but her heart was too attached to that place and you can see that because she looked back okay so if her heart is attached to that place she's going to take that place with her so she had to be destroyed all right so that's that's the two messages i got from this story that so oftentimes we look back because our hearts are still in a situation that God is trying to protect us from. Our hearts are still back there, okay? Imagine just looking backwards and trying to walk forward. You can't, you're gonna, you're gonna bump into things, okay? You're gonna bump into, you're gonna trip, you're gonna fall, you're gonna bump into things. So in your life, in your journey, on your journey, fulfilling your purpose, stop looking back, just keep going forward, just go forward. Whatever happened in the past is in the past, let it go. Okay, let it go and let your heart move on. Okay, do it. it's for your own well-being. You're going to get to the mountain that God has promised you, the place of peace. Okay, the place where he was not going to destroy. All right. The Bible also always talks about fleeing to the mountains. I mean, if you've read Revelations, you know the story, the part where, they, where he says to Judea, that's how I pronounce it. He tells Judea to flee to the mountains when the end comes and all that stuff. So the Bible is always talking about fleeing to the mountains. The mountains to me represent like a place of peace or a place where like no harm can come to you, okay? So go to that place of peace, okay? Fulfill your purpose. 
And when we get into purpose, it's not, not everybody is made out to be a preacher. Not everybody's made out to be an evangelist, a dancer, a gospel singer. Not everybody's made out to be those things. Maybe you like business, okay? And business is your purpose in life. You, so business is your purpose. You can do a lot with business that fulfills the plan that God has for you, okay? Maybe you could open up some shelters that can bring money back in, but also help people at the same time. Maybe you can open up, eh, I want to say mega churches because that's, <laughs> maybe you can open up an orphanage, you know, places that can help. Maybe you can start, you can persuade people to give to charity or something like that. Maybe you like doing hair. Maybe you can help your clients find God, okay? Bring them to God, bring them to Jesus. Maybe you like cooking, okay? Maybe you can cook for the church, or if you don't go to church, maybe you can cook for homeless people. Maybe you could cook at a kitchen that can help people who need it, okay? Maybe you could cook for the elderly. Maybe you could cook food for orphans, something like that, you know? There's, it's a lot of, there's a lot of purposes that each and every one of us has to fulfill, and it's not the same as another person. So you can't look at someone else and say, oh, they're a preacher, so maybe my purpose is to be a preacher. Or they're prophesizing, or maybe I'm supposed to prophes prophesy, okay? I still don't know my purpose, okay? And that's probably why I got this message, because maybe I was too busy looking back that I couldn't see what my purpose was. I couldn't see what was in front of me, what God had in store for me, okay? Maybe y'all could see my purpose. I can't, okay? I'm still working on it. I'm still working on moving forward and continuing going forward. I'm still being sanctified, okay? But the message of the story is to go. Just go for it. Just complete your will, your purpose. You have a desire in your heart that you know will fulfill you, that God has placed in your heart from the time of birth, okay? So you know what you like. You know what makes you happy when you do it. Maybe you like to write, okay? If you like to write, you can reach people through writing. You're, you're, when people read your, your work, your piece of write, words, whatever, when they read your poetry or when they read your rap verses or, or maybe you're a rapper, when they hear your music, you enlighten something in them, okay? So you can reach people through that. Everybody's purpose is different. So reach your purpose and stop looking back at past hurt, okay? Forgive, forgive too, because if you don't forgive, you can't, you're not gonna move forward because you're gonna bring that piece of hurt with you everywhere you go. So forgive and don't look back, just let it go. Just let it go and move forward, all right? And be obedient. That's the message I had for today. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Oh, and God bless y'all all. Have a good day. <laughs> Goodbye.